Hey guitar playing champions, in this easy guitar tapping lesson, I show you how to learn to tap fast and clean while keeping all the other strings, the ones you aren't playing, quiet. So you only hear the cool tapping licks and not string noise. Now many guitar players struggle to learn to tap and want to know what's the right way to do tapping on the guitar. Well, there is more than one right way. The method I will show you today will help you to learn to tap quickly build your tapping speed and keep everything clean. When I first learned the basics of how to do two hand tapping on the guitar, I struggled because I was doing it all wrong. Once I finally learned a better way to tap on the guitar, the next problem that I had was it sounded sloppy because I didn't have all the other strings muted as I was tapping. So they were making noise. Eventually I learned how to do guitar tapping and keep it all clean and today I'm going to show and teach this stuff to you. So grab your guitar and let's go. Alright, so the first thing we have to talk about is the right hand position. Where exactly are we going to put the hand on the guitar so we can do the tapping and keep everything clean. So the first thing that I'm going to suggest to do is focus on your thumb in your picking hand, in your right hand. Okay, now just a little side note, I am holding the pick in this hand. I'm not going to be using it for tapping, but when you're playing guitar for real and you're picking stuff and then you want to go to tapping, you need to do something with the pick and you need to be able to do that, whatever you're going to do, quickly so you can go back and forth between tapping and picking and tapping and picking. So what I do when I hold the pick this way, I just put it right here in my first, in my uh, middle finger. So it goes like this and like this, like this and like this. And I just hold it here so I can, I'm free to tap with the index finger or whatever, okay? Now, so the first thing I said earlier is that we wanna focus on where we lay our thumb. Where do we put our thumb? So I'm gonna suggest you take your hand and you just do this. Just, just do this on the guitar, okay? That's all it is. There's no special, you know, position. You just do this. Now the thumb is gonna lay on all of the lower strings, the strings this way, so that we can tap uh, with our index finger. So let's imagine we're gonna tap something on string number two. We would want the thumb to lay on strings three, four, five, and six, okay? So I'm just gonna do this, and there it is on strings three, four, five, and six. So if I turn the guitar on, the only string you're hearing right now is string number two because strings three, four, five, and six are muted with the thumb. Now, I also mute string number one with my middle finger. I use the tip of the middle finger and I just lay it on string one, okay? So I'm gonna turn my hand, turn my body this way so you can see. So my thumb is here, strings three, four, five, and six, just lay in there. And then my middle finger, the tip of it, is right here on string one. So this allows string two to ring out clearly and all the other strings are muted even when I hit them all, okay? So that's gonna help keep the guitar quiet. Now, we won't always be doing tapping on string number two, of course, so if we're gonna, let's say we're gonna tap on string number three, then we would need to move our hand over so that the thumb is now on strings four, five, and six, and string three is, can be heard, right? Then I take the middle finger, the tip of the middle finger of my picking hand, and I put it on string two, and my, my fingers are pretty thick, so, I can have string two on that side of the knuckle and uh, the finger and then string one on this side. But if your fingers aren't as thick as mine, then just use this finger for string one. Okay, so now we've got the tip of this finger is on string one. The tip of this finger will be on string two. String three is allowed to ring and the thumb is on strings four, five, and six. If you want to tap onto string four, you same thing. You move your thumb over and then these fingers come over. You can involve your pinky finger if you want to. You probably don't need to because the fingers, you just put the fingers, these fingers in between the strings and they mute the higher strings, okay? And then string four is clear to be heard. So that's how I'm muting everything so that when I'm gonna be tapping, which I'll show you some examples in just a moment, everything else is quiet, okay? And that's really important because if I teach you the, uh, the tapping motion, or maybe you already know it, but it's not clean because the other strings are ringing out, then the tapping isn't gonna sound very good, right? So we want to make sure that we've got the guitar under control, and this is particularly important if you're using high gain pickups or you use a lot of distortion and gain and the gain's on 10. The guitar is gonna be noisy. We've gotta take control of it somehow, and that's the way I recommend to do it. So it just looks just like this. So if we're tapping up here on string, let's say string three, 
then that's how it would look. That's how my hand would look, okay? If we're going to get my first finger out of the way so you can see it, that's what it looks like, okay? The pick is not in the way uh, of, of anything. Okay, if we have string two, when I tap string two, you move your hand this way, string one, you just do this way, okay? All right, so the next thing we have to talk about is how do we get the note started? So if I'm gonna play this, how do we get the string in motion when we're not picking anything? Well, there's more than one way to do this. The way that I do it is I simply take my index finger on my picking hand and I pluck the string. So I just pull the string towards me this way. So get a little harmonic there at the end of the notes. But if I do this, now I only make that plucking motion the, just to put the string in motion. After that, we don't do that anymore. We just do the hammer-ons and pull-offs and the tapping. But to get it started, I just pull the thing, pull the string towards me. So I just, you know, you see my middle finger, my first finger, it's just plucking like this to set the string in motion. And now the string is vibrating. And we can go ahead and start the tapping. All right, now before we get into the tapping licks I'm gonna show you, the next thing we have to talk about is how to tap with the first finger. There's two different ways you can really do this. You can either tap towards you. So in other words, I don't tap that way. That's why it doesn't sound that great. But you can tap towards you. So the finger is tapping, coming down, and then moving towards you. The reason why I don't do it that way is because my thumb is kind of in the way and it gets in the way of this motion which is why it didn't sound very good when i just did it okay but if you hold your hand a different way if you tilt your hand this way then you could tap towards you and the thumb wouldn't be in the way of the index finger so you could do it that way the way i do it i like my thumb out here because i have a greater sense of control over the guitar and i tap away so I'll exaggerate the motions. This will sound horrible because I'm going to exaggerate it. So I'm doing the hammer on. Tapping, moving my finger away from myself. When you put it all together, it's not going to sound bad like that. It's going to sound smooth. I'm just showing you the, tap, the, the tapping towards you versus tapping away. So I recommend a tap away. You can do whatever you want, but that's how I'd suggest to do it. All right, so now that we've got our hand in position, we're tapping away if that's what you choose to do and all the other strings are quiet and we've got a way to hold the guitar pick if we need to, let's talk about example number one. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set the string in motion as I showed you before. We're just gonna pluck the string. Then we're gonna have a hammer on here, hammer on here, then tap here and we'll just stop. And as I'm releasing the string, I'm tapping away. Okay, so let me clarify something. When I said I'm tapping away, I, I probably didn't state that in the best possible way. Let me restate it for you. When we're doing the actual tapping motion, the hand is, the finger's coming straight down on the guitar. Okay, it's not coming at an angle or anything like that. But once we make the motion and we need to now do the pull off with this finger, you either have to go towards you or away from you, or you can go straight up. If you go straight up, it will be hard to articulate uh, the string in a strong way. So it, it helps you to get more volume, more sound to either tap, toward, do the pull off motion towards you after the tap or away from you, okay? So again, it's like this. Now away, now away, now away. All right, so for example one, we're just gonna do this and hold it. Okay, now let's move to example two. It's the same thing, except our highest note, we're gonna move down to the 11th fret. So again, here's example one. 
Example two. All right, now let's move to example three. We're just gonna take our index finger and we're gonna move it to the ninth fret. And what we're trying to do here is these exercises are just designed to help you make sure that all the notes are clean and clear. If we start doing this, which you can do a little bit later, it's easy to miss, okay? Uh, mistakes or notes that are not articulated very well, or if noise creeps in, it's, it's harder to hear that and detect it, especially when you're starting. So you wanna just take it simple and just do that for now. All right, if you don't do tapping very often, or if it's totally new to you, you might feel like a beginner all over again. Remember the day when you first got your guitar and you had no calluses on your fretting hand finger and it kind of hurt, got kind of got sore after a while of playing? That's what's gonna happen over here if you, if you don't use this fingertip very much for playing guitar, it's gonna get raw. So the tapping will seem a little harder at first if the tip of the finger doesn't have calluses and it's soft. But as you play this a little bit every day, don't go crazy right now if this is new to you. But just spend, you know, 10 minutes on this a day, you'll start to build up this callus. It'll take probably three weeks or so, three and a half weeks if you do that, what I just said. And you'll develop a good callus. And then from there, the tapping will be much, much easier to do and it won't, your finger won't feel sore anymore. Now let's take a look at example number four. This is similar to example number one, except now. We're not gonna stop up here. We're gonna go up and then down. Okay, so for, for this moment, don't do this. We'll do that a little later. Right now, just do this. And verify that it's clean and the notes are articulated well. Stop, think about it. Was that clean? Did I hear this note? Did I hear that note? Was the tap good? Was the transition from this back to this good? You know, how was it? Did I get from here to here okay? Stop, listen, analyze just for a few seconds and then try it again. And if you notice anything that wasn't good, wasn't perfect for you, then make a little adjustment and try and do better next time. Take a listen. Was it good? Was it not good? If not, what needs to be fixed? Same thing, what needs to be fixed, if anything? All right, let's move to example number five. This is the same thing, except now we're gonna move our index finger to the 11th fret. Listen to that, play it, then stop, then analyze. You've gotta be your own teacher here in this moment. Was it good? Did it suck? What do, what do we need to do different to make it better? Those are the kind of questions to ask and then make the next attempt and try and get it a little better than the time before. Now let's move to example number six. Again, same thing. We're just gonna take our highest note, the 11th fret, and move it down to nine. Same thing, play it once, stop, think, analyze, adjust. Play, stop, think, analyze, adjust. You get the pattern. Do that every time. You do that for a few minutes and then you'll gradually get better and better and you'll refine it and the technique will get better and it will get smoother. Don't worry about the speed right now. We, we're gonna develop the speed or you're gonna develop the speed, but we want, we want that what it is that you develop is good speed. We want it usable. We don't want it to be you know, fast but not clear or not articulate or not clean. Now before we get into the remaining examples for this video, I've got another video on YouTube that you might wanna check out also. It's called Guitar Tapping Lesson. This makes tapping sound better. And I'm gonna share some things in that video that make the tapping that you do sound much better. So go check that video out right after this one. All right, now let's take a look at example number seven. And here, now we're gonna start putting it all together a little bit. Okay, 
So do that a couple of times and then stop and listen and ask yourself, was that good? Was it clean? Was there noise? There was a little bit of noise when I just played. If you didn't catch it, go back up the video 10 seconds, 15, I guess 20 seconds now, and listen for some noise. Now the noise that occurred was not string noise. It wasn't, you know, this. I mean, I, I played it well, if I do say so myself, but the, what I did not do well was control the noise when sliding my hand, okay? And I made sure to do that so you could hear it, okay? Because that's something that you wanna watch out for. Whenever you're using thumb muting, especially when your hand is up here instead of down here, Sometimes, when you're using a lot of gain, you get this sound. Now, if that sound uh, is prominent when you're doing the tapping, see there, it was cleaner than the first time. Why was it cleaner than the first time? Well, it was cleaner this time because what I did different was I didn't slide I didn't do that when I played. Instead, I held down the, the string, right? And then to get my hand from this position to this position, I picked it up, okay? So I, my hand is in this position, and now I'm picking it up and putting it over to get to those other frets. I'm not sliding, because that sliding makes that noise. So. And the reason I point that out is sometimes people will criticize the technique that I'm using, which is okay, you can criticize it if you want to. But the point is they'll criticize it because when they try it, they get a lot of noise and they think, oh, the technique is not good because look, look at how noisy this is. Okay, yeah, if you slide your hand around on the string, on wound strings, yeah, it's gonna be noisy. But if you pick your hand up a little bit and you kind of jump here, then you're fine. And the split second that the hand is in the air, that's still okay. These strings are not going to be set in motion because the mute is removed from the strings for, you know, 400 milliseconds or whatever. You'll be fine. All right, so now let's start putting it all together and start to develop some speed here. So what we're going to do is we're going to play this. So my fingers are at fret 4, fret 7, and I'm tapping on fret 12. So we'll do that you know, like four times. Then we're gonna leave this finger in place. We're gonna stay on the 12th fret, but the left hand, the fretting hand, is gonna move from the fourth fret and seventh fret to the fifth fret and the ninth fret. So we're moving from here to here, and this note stays the same. So it's gonna be like this. So I play the first measure, then measure two. Okay, and then measure three, we're gonna take this fretting hand position, 5th fret and ninth fret, move it up to 7 and 11. So in this case, the tapping doesn't change. We could move the tap note around, and you can have fun doing that. We're in the key of B here. So you could move it around to any note that's in the key of B or whatever you want to do. But right now is a cool little lick. You can just have fun and you don't have to feel like you've got to follow the tablature exactly. If you want to move around and do other things, go ahead. Have a lot of fun with it. It's cool. But now we're starting to put everything together. All right, so now let's talk about how do you practice the two-hand tapping and make sure that everything is clean as you're developing the speed. As we said earlier, it really starts with the position of your of your picking hand. Okay. So I use the thumb muting technique. There are other techniques that exist, and some of them are good too. Not all of them are, in my opinion. But this is a way that you can keep the lower strings quiet. You take the middle finger, mute the higher string, or the middle, these two fingers to mute the higher ones. And now you got the whole guitar locked down. It's not making noise. Remember not to slide. You're going to have to pick your hand up a little bit. Just a little. Just, just for, you know, half a second or whatever. As you, not even half a second. To, as you shift your uh, picking or your right hand finger around, um, to move it around if you want to do different things. Okay, so if you do that, that will help keep things clean. Now, the temptation that people have 
And I've been teaching guitar for over 30 years, so I've seen this tens of thousands of times, so literally, okay, over that period. The temptation is students want to go fast, and they want to go fast right, right now, okay? And they start, start working on the speed and trying to get it really fast and stuff. And, hey, listen, I love fast guitar playing just as much as everybody else. I think it's cool, too. But remember, what is it that we're practicing? If, if You can get really good at practicing slop and be really fast playing sloppy, or you can practice getting everything nice and clean and articulate with good tone and then practice getting that better. Which one do you want? If you only care about speed only, you'll end up developing a lot of fast sloppy playing. And I really don't think that's what you're going to want. Okay, so if we want it to sound better, then we need to make sure that what we're doing is good and it sounds good and then build the speed up from there. All right, before we finish off, if you want to double your guitar speed while cutting your practice time in half, I'll show you how in my free e-guide called Double Your Guitar Speed While Cutting Your Practice Time in Half. It's totally free, no strings attached. Click the link below to download your copy so that you can increase your speed on the guitar very quickly.